This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Welcome to Guide Runner episode two. Firstly, I just want to say I massively appreciate all the positivity for the first episode and of course all your comments in the community post. Some really good suggestions there that I'll definitely consider for future Guide Runner episodes. So I like to start these episodes by answering some of the more popular questions I get from you guys. In today's case, it's what are my main inspirations and how do I come up with the ideas for my artwork? I'm inspired by the usual things, be it films, TV, books, nature, but nothing inspires me more than when I stumble across the awesome artwork of another artist. Sometimes it's as simple as seeing a colour palette I like or an interesting use of perspective. The work from my favourite artists usually leads me to trying new things, generally experimenting and just striving to get better. You don't want to copy work unless you're doing an artist study, but look for ways you can take what you're inspired by and put your own stamp on it and make it fresh. It's like that Bruce Lee quote. So for today's piece we're going back underwater with a bit of a sci-fi edge. I don't usually work with close-up subjects so this will make a nice change of pace. The first thing I need to do is just blend it slightly with the scene and make it a little bit less glamorous. I'm using these 3D assets from Envato Elements which allows me to pick the exact angle I need. I can then position it over the model's face, lower the opacity just to get the sizing right. And then erase any parts I don't want. I want the helmet to look a bit more futuristic and not be associated with space, so I found another cool asset that I'm going to drop on top and again just delete any bits I don't want and then just match the colours of the base helmet below. Okay, so she needs a body. For that we're going to drop in yet another 3D asset and then just delete any bits I don't want and keep anything that I think will be useful. I like this balaclava element so I'm just going to cut that out and place it under the visor. I'm then going to move the body into position and use some adjustment layers so that the lighting and colours match the rest of the suit. Painting in some shadows just so it feels more planted to the face. I also like this helmet feature from the last 3D asset I used, so I've cut that out and I've placed it on top of my helmet. But before we continue, let me introduce today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a virtual private network available as an easy to use app and browser extension that basically lets you place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world, allowing you to access the internet as if you were in another country. This allows you to access and unblock websites and content that you may not usually be able to see. It also encrypts your data to add an extra layer of security when you're online to keep all of your personal information safe and your browsing activity hidden. Now I've been using a VPN for many years and working as a creative I'm constantly pinging my work across the net. What Surfshark allows me to do is encrypt all my files and safely send them around the world wide web with the insurance of knowing that they're secure. But the biggest draw for me is Surfshark's ability to unlock content from Netflix and all those other awesome streaming apps. Imagine you wanted to watch Rambo Part 2. You've just seen Part 1, but now you need some more Stallone. The problem is, it's not available in your country. Ah! Well, with Surfshark, you can easily connect to any country where it's available and boom, the most dangerous man in the world is back. Another great feature is Surfshark's clean web. 
It blocks ads, trackers and malware, allowing you to safely browse the internet, which is especially useful when you're connected to Wi-Fi networks other than your own. And the coolest part is, Surfshark offers one account to use on an unlimited number of devices. So be sure to check the link in the description and use the special code PhaseRunner to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. And Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. So I'm gonna use a hard brush just to paint in some highlights and shadows just to give it a bit of overall texture. I still haven't introduced the main focus of the piece yet, that's coming soon. But for now, I'm just making general tweaks to this character so that I've got a solid base to work with. The suit is feeling a little lackluster, so I found this cool metalwork image which I'm going to work into the chest plate of the suit. And then proceed to move the image down so you can barely see it. Nice. This image is loosely inspired by the movies The Abyss and Underwater and I love the idea of having LED lights inside the helmet just to drive home that sci-fi vibe. And if you've seen my work you know I love working with blues and purples but for once I've resisted the urge and I've gone with the yellow so I'm proud of myself for that one. Oh well that didn't last long, there's the blues again. adding an adjustment layer so I can add in some highlights given off from these LED lights inside the helmet. Okay, here comes the main focus of the image, a jellyfish. I'm going to warp that into position and I decide that the nice red pink hue is a good colour to go with. Let's slow things down just for a second. One of the great things about Photoshop is the unlimited potential and possibilities when creating your artwork. I'm constantly problem solving on how to create the most interesting effect in the most efficient way possible. This is all part of the fun and the process. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, I had an LED image that I originally planned to use for the helmet. But in the moment, I thought it might be cool to try applying them to the tentacles of the jellyfish. It's a simple idea, but I think it adds another level of creativity, and in this case, I think it turned out pretty okay. Always be on the lookout for these simple ideas that just take your artwork a little bit further. I then introduce these spores which I'm going to use to separate the background and foreground elements. They'll also help me give the image a bit more depth. And same thing with the bubbles, but I'm also reaching a stage where I need to make it clear that the scene is taking place underwater. The helmet's missing some nice shiny highlights, so I've got this wine glass that I'm going to set to vivid light and uh, just to raise the bits I don't want. It may appear as though I'm erasing most of the effect but I am keeping some of it in there and eventually they will all add up and contribute to the final image in some way. Add 
adding some lighting and glow effects just to give it that murky look and simulate that underwater feel. This particle image will also help give the water a bit more life and texture. The top half of the jellyfish is looking a bit bland and uninspired, so again in a bid just to level things up, I decide to drop in some space images and I'm going to overlay those. I really want the lighting to pop, so again, I'm just painting in more brushwork for the glows. I imagine the glow from the jellyfish to be quite strong, so it's important that the colors and the highlights on the helmet match that. And then simply paint in some highlights. Okay, I'm going to let these last moments play out before the final image reveal. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. That really helps. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and hit that bell to stay notified about any new content.